From Drax to Zax, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Amy Dallin. Delighted to be here for some value of here. We have Marquia McCarty. I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> and we have Sam Mags. Excelsior! I am stoked to be here. Uh, I'm stoked to have you all here. Three uh, returning players, uh, but this time all focused entirely on Marvel Comics. Uh, this season we're doing a lot of themed episodes, going to try to like narrow in here, and you're all Marvel fans, I assume, if you're here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what yeah. is Marvel? <laughs> yeah. I'm in the wrong episode. Oh, no. It's like being in the wrong, wrong universe. Yeah. <laughs> shit, I thought shit, this was shit. the Amalgam universe. Was <laughs> You're halfway there. Oh, Mike, shit. not to be that nerd, but uh -oh. um, are we focused on Marvel Comics, <clears throat> MCU, Marvel movies, or does this also include Marvel television, also including subscription services? You know, inquiring minds want to know. Yes. This is uh, a little bit of everything. So Ooh. this includes uh, MCU, this includes comics, uh, this includes some TV shows. I think I'm trying to remember the questions I wrote in here. Yes, give but, us more uh, info. <laughs> but try to try to do a, like a widespread of like let's let's get like the full like if you're a fan, you've probably dabbled in these things anyway. So like let's let's get the full scope of that if we can. All right, well, we're going to jump right into our first statement here. Hopefully you have your buzzers at the ready. In the climactic final battle of Avengers Endgame, previously deceased heroes like Doctor Strange, Black Panther, and War Machine join in with still living heroes like Iron Man and the Hulk to finally kill Thanos, something they've been waiting to do since the infamous snap. Uh, Sam. Um, actually, Black Panther wasn't dead. I he feel was. like I just, he was. Oh. He did. It was traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, actually, they didn't actually die. They were just dusted, which doesn't count as death because <laughs> Natasha dies. The rest of them <laughs> are alternate gonna, universe. That's a that's a very interesting. I argue this. I can definitely see the argument for that. That's not what we're going for, and there there is maybe something I would say that's more incorrect here. But if no one lands on it, I'll give you the point for for in, for for a creative thing. Um, actually, was it that Doctor Strange was not dead? Nope, that's not it either. So hey, I'll, I'll go, <laughs> everyone lived in it's my mind. It's gonna be something really small. With Look, it is, a, it is a little nitpicky, I admit. Uh, we'll give that point to Marquia for your clever interpretation of what death means in the Marvel Universe, which yeah. is, what does it mean? Um, what we were going for here is we said that they've been waiting to kill Thanos since the snap, but actually they had already killed Thanos once already by this point in the movie. Uh, they hadn't been waiting. Uh, they, he had already died uh, at the beginning of the movie. This is the second time that they kill Thanos. Um, nitpicky, I admit, uh, which is why I'll still give a point to Marquia for, for her creative answer. <laughs> as well i feel like marquia's answer is just as accurate as whatever you just said that's how i feel so i'm, I'm, I'm not mad about the point yeah yeah and yeah, they yeah. have been waiting to kill him for like a long time just <laughs> generally but sure i mean if you want to like waiting to kill him an awful long time um well we'll still give you that point uh, marquia so that is one point for you and we will move on to our next statement here Adamantium is an almost indestructible fictional metal alloy that first appeared in Marvel Comics with the introduction of Wolverine in The Incredible Hulk number 180. Since then, Adamantium has played a major role in other Marvel characters, including Sabretooth, Bullseye, and The Russian. Uh, Amy has buzzed in, looking very thoughtful. And then um, Marquia, behind. Actually, the traditional first appearance of Wolverine is 181. He does appear in a cameo in 180, but they don't establish anything about Adamantium until after that point. Uh, interesting. That is not what we're going for. Um, it, it could be correct, but there's prob. I think even, uh, I'll give you the Marquia special. If no one else gets <laughs> gets what we're going for here, I'll give you the point for that because if, if uh, Saltzman determines that is all in fact correct. Um, uh, but there is something more incorrect than that in this question. Uh, Adamantium wasn't uh, first wasn't first introduced with Wolverine. It was introduced before that, but then it was actually utilized with Wolverine with Project X. Um, Marquia, you did not say um, actually. Oh, oh come 
on. It's quarantine. Um, actually, um, actually. It's quarantine. Oh, it's quarantine. Uh, you are you are correct. I I feel like I have to be a stickler for the one rule. Uh, uh but uh, but um. You know, I'm gonna write a big note for myself and put it on the screen just, for me to like put um actually. <laughs> it breaks my heart every time, but I truly can't let it go because it's the one rule of the game, really. Adamantium was first introduced in 1969 with the uh, with the introduction of Ultron. Uh, in Avengers yeah. number 66 to 68. Uh, and that is, in fact, the first uh, appearance uh, or the first mention of adamantium. I've uh, made a sign for myself. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, actually. Uh, I feel like adamantium is kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. Like, the idea of something that doesn't exist that you can make it like, oh, cool, this is just the best thing ever. And you can use that whenever you want. It's like, cool, great, adamantium for everything. Then. Yeah. No, but the best part is when the two fake things have to fight. So adamantium v vibranium. Like, that's sure. the best part. <laughs> vibranium wins. Yeah. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Uh, well, cool. We'll move on to our next question here. The creature known as the Incredible Hulk was born as normal man Bruce Banner. While we may be most familiar with Hulk's bright green color, he was gray in the first issue and only became green due to coloring issues. This was later explained in-universe as the result of continued exposure to gamma rays. Marquia's buzzing in. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, ooh, I'm, I'm not really good on Hulk, but I'm gonna say uh, that gray was a later, um, uh, was a later visage of uh, the Hulk. He was green first, and then there's gray, and then you go into red Hulk, and so on and so forth later. Gray, gray Hulk is uh, is a character that that is uh, like sort of introduced later. But what I've said here is actually true. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, oh, I'm actually, I'm it, actually. It, 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 it actually doesn't matter because that's not what I was looking for. But, okay. but we'll, we'll get it in. There. I even made myself a sign. What? <laughs> uh, Sam. Um, actually, I have no idea, but I'm going to guess anyway, because I'm here, so I might yes. as well just give it a go. Um, actually, is it not gamma radiation? Is it a different kind of radiation? Is it maybe like delta waves or something? I mean, I feel like it's gamma radiation, but that's like, that's the... That's the next biggest noun here, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as good a guess as any, because we're all guessing. Uh, that's a great guess, and I will admit that this is an extremely nitpicky one. We'll, we'll go ahead and call it here. Uh, mm -hmm. Technically speaking, but you know the answer is going to be good, but it starts with very technically. Uh, though we know him very colloquially as Bruce Banner, his full name is Robert Bruce Banner. Um, this is because there were a few early issues where uh, he was oh. actually called Bob Banner. And uh, in order to to like retroactively correct the mistake, uh, the, the solution was like, his name is Robert Bruce Banner, but he never goes by Robert. He's mostly just Bruce. But it wasn't wrong when he was called Bob. That's just... That that's just his actual name. Uh, Classic Marvel. I love okay. Silver Age Marvel, where they're like, "Yeah, that was a plan the whole time." <laughs> I learned something today. Yeah, right. nicely I feel good done about that. that. I knew they made name nicely mistakes, done. but uh, didn't spot in the question. I I do. I love the that strategy of like of like not really covering, like not paying attention to your own uh, continuity and just being like. It still works. Shut up. <laughs> Who <laughs> yeah. says it doesn't work? Cool. Well, our next uh, question is a fan submitted question. So this comes oh. to us from one of our viewers. Uh, we said we were doing something Marvel related, and this is what they submitted. This comes to us from Flair Javier. Everyone knows the Infinity Stones, soul, time, space, mind, reality, and power. But what most people don't know is that they're actually more than these. The other stones include the Ego, Build, Void, and Death Stones. Marquia and then Amy very close behind. Um, no, there's only the original Infinity oh, wait, Stones. Wait, wait, wait. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm <laughs> actually. We have a very supportive. Uh, I'm, actually, here. I'm actually, it's the original Infinity Stones, the ones that were uh, said in the first of the question. I've never heard of the Death Stone. I know death. That's not what we're going for. That's not what we're going for. No. Amy, you were next to buzz in. Um, actually, I suppose we are calling them st stones now, although we all know they were gems. Uh, but I think this question is designed to trip us up because, of course, Ego is a living planet and not, in fact, an infinity stone. 
Uh, so according to uh, so what we have here is that there is no void stone, um, though, there, though the others do exist, and that there in place of the void stone should be the continuity stone, which is found in Deadpool, Volume 3, Issue 27, which gives Deadpool the power to go back and retcon Marvel Comics. A lot of these are Golden Age, Silver Age questions. Like, I got into comics in the early 2000s. Runaways was, like, the first Marvel comic I ever super got into because yeah. comics, like from Golden Age, Silver Age, and, and from the 90s, like Bronze Age especially, like never really looked like they were for me. Like yeah. that, they didn't look like there was anything there really that was made for me or like meant to appeal to me in any particular way. So a lot of this older stuff, like perhaps this is sacrilege to say as, as a Marvel fan or as someone who creates Marvel stuff, like I just, I respect where it came from, but it doesn't like, that's not my like zone of comics. Oh, uh, yeah. Totally. No, Sam, I'm totally going to jump on this because, like, yes, I, I totally understand where you're coming from with it. Like, for instance, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, but I got into Doctor Who, um, yeah. you know, during with, uh, was it uh, uh, Eccleston? That was mine, the ninth Doctor on it. I do, like, I love talking to people about comics, even though I don't read that many of them, in part because... I, I am intimidated by the just the sheer breadth uh, of the, like just like how like huge how like how confusing the continuity can be and how much there is and I know it's like hey you don't have to read it all but like I am one of those people it's like but you have to read it all right yeah, thank <laughs> you Mike and Sam the the things that you both said in terms of like barriers to comics seeming intimidating or Sam comics not seeming welcoming like because those are really real things I love to hear people share them out loud because y'all know I have worked at a shop for many many years and the whole mission statement is to try to break those down for pe barriers down for people like one person at a time if possible uh, because those are very real factors and you don't do anyone any favors if you pretend they don't exist but the truth is that there's wonderful stuff on the other side so if you at home are feeling like either of those feelings you can just like the people you're looking at fall totally in love with this stuff because there's great stuff there for you specifically and you don't have to love any era or any story <laughs> but there is stuff you're gonna love okay off the soapbox well that, i mean that that's like like the stuff that i have read uh, the comics that i have read primarily like leans toward um things that are extremely new because it's like oh i don't yeah. have any back stuff to catch up on here it's like i'm starting along with it and i can like i can follow along now but i don't need like a whole catalog that i need to like delve into uh, okay, so going into our first shiny question here, uh, Markia has one point. Sam and Amy are waiting patiently. All right, well, we'll move on to our next question, which is our first shiny question of the game. Shiny questions like shiny Pokemon are worth the same uh, number of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. So this is going to be a little audio visual question. This is a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? In just a second, we're going to show an image up on the screen that we have altered in some way. It's up to you to find what has been altered and what it should be. Let's go ahead and take a look at that image. Buzz in when you think you know what's wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Amy has buzzed in. Um, actually, you've changed his costume to be the better known red costume, but that would not have appeared on his introduction. That is correct. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah, Daredevil, uh, Daredevil, his initial costume was a uh, bright yellow, which it's a devil. It feels like it's calling for red. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they got there eventually. They had to work through some stuff, but they yeah. put on like the right thing at some point. So that's- Ray Hulk, yellow Daredevil. They just had to work it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just, you know, it was a publishing thing, you know. Yeah. They had more yellow back then. <laughs> Uh, great. Well, that point will go to Amy for the yellow. That was a good one. All right. Well, we'll move on to our next question here. Not every supervillain has a killer hook. Some of the weirder supervillains in Marvel Comics include the marijuana-themed Dr. Bong, Asbestos Lady, who wears asbestos and dies of cancer at a young age, Typeface, the man with letters glued to his face, and Turner D. Century, a rich jerk raised in the simulacrum of the early 20th century. Marquia was the first to buzz in with Amy close behind her. Marquia. Um, actually, uh, uh, Asbestos Lady did not die of cancer. She does, actually. Oh, that's it's so just, sad. It's that fucked, is right? so sad. I mean, like, wow. It, it I was hoping she went out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> she was a supervillain for Human Torch and was like, if I wear asbestos, you can't touch me. And, oh. and it 
tra- truly tragic, but also does make sense. It's like, I guess if you wrap yourself in asbestos, that's not going to be great, you know? Like, paint lady. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> like, and the I, chain smoker. There were so uh, many other fabrics that she could have, like, clued in on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes flammable but it's and it's you know comics. you can invent a thing you can just be like hey this is a flame retardant uh fabric that doesn't exist um and won't be damaging to my health amy do you have a do you have a guess all right well i'm 90 um actually mm-hmm. uh i'm 90 percent sure eternity century is real so i'm gonna say that much as this would be hilarious dr bong is not marijuana themed that is correct. Dr. Bong is not marijuana themed. Do you, do you know what Dr. Bong... Dr. Bong I don't remember at all. Uh, Dr. Bong uh, is bell themed. He has a big bell shaped helmet um, that can, uh, I think, protects him in some way. He appears in Howard the Duck comics. That's uh, at that point, we'll go to Amy for, for fun, identifying Amy that takes Dr. The Bong... Lead. <laughs> but only uh, by one. Very good. Well, we'll move on to our next question here. The baseline reality of the Marvel Universe is known as Earth-616, but many alternate realities exist. Spider-Man Reign, for example, is set 30 years in the future on Earth-7237, where New York is run by an authoritarian government and policed by a ruthless group called Reign. In this world, an older Peter Parker is haunted by the memory of his wife, Mary Jane Watson, who died years earlier in a terrorist attack. Oh my god, they killed Mary Jane? That's like, I can't believe it. I know, like they never, never kill females that. in comics. <laughs> <laughs> the wife died? Wow. What? <laughs> um, actually, I, I do believe Sam is completely right, but, and I, I don't even want to say this, but is this, this might be the story where very famously the way Mary Jane dies is different? And it's horrible. Yes, Amy, you're you're on the right track here. Uh, it's very bad and stupid. I mean, you just expected that she would what? She gets cancer from radioactive sperm, right? That's... That is correct. Comic. <laughs> um, uh, it, what Mary Jane the hell? Dies from repeated contact with Peter Parker's radioactive <gasps> semen. We'll just sit in this for a moment. <laughs> oh my god! I want to be. Here's my thing. Sam, Sam was already angry when it was like they killed Mary Jane, and not realizing that they, that she dies I in the absolute stupidest. In the room where someone was like, "I got it, y'all. I I fucking got." I think it. I cracked what? the code. Ooh, Sorry, if that's your favorite story, but. <laughs> Oh no! I, for better well, or for worse, that yeah. point's going to eighty. <laughs> yeah, I have not read those comics, and I'm not writing that down. So <laughs> that's not Could going on the reading list. Not, I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna read those comics. It's the holidays, and I get it. It's a crazy time of the year. But HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes that cut back on meal prep time and cleanup time so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more time with your friends and family. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options. So there's plenty of variety. HelloFresh meals are ready in about 30 minutes or less. Plus, with their quick and easy meals, 20 minutes or less recipes, and easy prep and cleanup options, you can have food on the table even faster, which means you can spend more time with your loved ones. Don't forget dessert, too. Satisfy that sweet tooth with seasonal, limited-time goodies like ginger spice truffles or cherry cheesecake swirl bars. I spend a lot of time planning out my menus. I'll sit down the day before, I'll make sure that they're all varied and healthy, and I've got all kinds of different things going on, and that they're not too busy on busy nights. Honestly, having someone else do the planning was a lifesaver. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Actually14 and use the code Actually14 for 14 free meals and 3 free gifts. 14 free meals and 3 free gifts just by going to HelloFresh.com slash Actually14 using the code Actually14. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Well, uh, that is that. Our next question is a uh, is this an MCU question. We're going back to the movies here. A few actors hold the distinction of playing multiple distinct characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but actress Alfre Woodard was the first to do so. She appeared as one character in the Luke Cage series and one in Captain America Civil War. Oh, uh, Marquia. Um, actually, uh, I wasn't the first person before Alfre Woodard uh, did it as those two different characters. I would say that it was uh, the same actor that did Flame On with Torches. And also, uh, Captain America uh, do more roles than Alfre Woodard did before her. 
So you have uh, you've actually you found the thing that is incorrect, uh, which is um, that that Alfred Woodard was not the first. We did specify MCU, where I don't think the Fantastic Four series is officially a part of that. Um, but you have found what's wrong. So I'm going to give you the point, unless someone can tell me who the first actor to play two distinct roles in the MCU is. Oh, I'm trying to think. This I is feel a like really I definitely hard... have heard this before. Me and too. It's clean out of my head. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like Mark's going to say it and we're all going to be like, of course. <laughs> well, that point then will go to Marquia. Um, the uh, the first actor was actually Seth Green. Um, oh. who, what? Wait, yeah. I would not have gotten that. No. Uh, Wait, so what he, did he do? So he has a cameo in Iron Man 2 as, quote, excited Stark Expo fan. Okay. Uh, and then uh, he also appears as Howard the Duck uh, in uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, so there's actually more than 20 actors who have played two different roles in in the MCU. Um, oh. uh, usually for things like that, like playing a bit role in like a TV show, um, but then becoming a larger role in a movie or vice versa yeah. or playing okay. different things, um, which kind of raises the question. Were there not other actors? Like, come on, like I can play excited Stark Expo fan. I'm sure oh. any of you could. Yeah. <laughs> Mike. Like you've never heard of nepotism before. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will bring us to our second shiny question. This is a game called Order Up. So in just a moment, we're going to show a selection of things that are all out of order, and we're going to want you to put them in a specific order. Now, when we normally do this in the studio, you have things that you can manipulate in front of you, but we don't have that here. So instead, we're going to do this is almost like spelling bee rules a little bit, where if you think you know the first thing, buzz in and tell us the first, and we'll like we'll basically like kind of go one at a time where okay. you can try to get a point and then whoever can like get the most correct will get the answer. It's a little confusing, um, uh, but basically we're trying to just collectively put this in the right order. These are characters from Marvel Comics and I want you to put them in order of first appearance. Okay. Uh, and this is specifically, though this may be tipping my hat a little bit, the first appearance of any character with this name, whether or not it's, it is the one that you are most familiar oh. with. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at these characters. All right, that is Sam and Amy and Marquia close behind. Sam, who's the first one here? I'm actually, okay, I want to say that Human Torch is first. That is correct. So I'm resetting. Marquia is first there. Who's number two? Uh, I'm going to say since Human Torch is the first one that uh, Mr. Fantastic is the second. That's actually incorrect. Uh, Ooh, okay. Uh, but Sam, Sam is next and then Amy. I'm actually, is it Thor? It is not Thor. Ooh. Amy. Loki? That's incorrect. Sam has buzzed in again. <laughs> Black Panther? Um, uh, that is incorrect. Dang. Marquia, you're next. I'm going to say that they probably went male before female, so I'm going to say Falcon. <laughs> I love the logic here, but that's actually incorrect. Amy, ah! it's going to kind of go to you uh, by process of elimination, but go yeah. ahead. Apparently so. Um, um, actually, there must have been some older version of a character with the name Black Widow. There was an older version of a character uh. with the name Black Widow. Not the Black Widow we know but uh, necessarily, but uh, Black Widow, uh, the first appearance of a character with the name Black Widow appeared in 1940. The character is now known as Clairvoyant, I believe. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh. Cool. Uh, Amy, are you buzzing in for number three? Who you got? I want to say next up is Mr. Fantastic. That's incorrect. Marquia. I'm going to say, say it again. Falcon. It's not Falcon. I'm going to stick with Thor. It's not Thor. Sam, you, you buzzed in immediately again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to say Black Panther. That's incorrect. Marquia. Yeah. Loki! You, you Loki, my boy, <laughs> my 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 son from Asgard. Strangely, uh, Loki predates Thor. Uh, Loki, okay. uh, Lo or at least the character of Loki appears in the comics. He's not exactly the same Loki, uh, you know, because like, obviously it's pulling from mythology. But there is a character named Loki who appears before Thor does. Our order right now is Marquia, Sam, and Amy. So who you got for number four? I'm gonna say Thor. That's incorrect. This Ooh. is going to go to Sam. I'm going to say Mr. Fantastic. It is Mr. Fantastic this time now. That is Amy, Marquia, then Sam. Of the remaining three, the next one is Thor. The next one is indeed Thor. 
<laughs> That's so fast, Amy. On the oh, come on. <laughs> of the two remaining, I think it's Black Panther. It is indeed Black Panther. Uh, yeah, uh, and then it's Falcon. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then, so uh, that was uh, three identified for Amy, uh, Sam with two, Marquia with one. I threw in a lot of curveballs in there uh, intentionally, but we learned a lot about the weird order of some of these characters. I think, personally, I got the hardest one, which was the first one on my first guess, which I do kind of feel like deserves a point. <laughs> All right, here we're, here's where we are. We've got four points for Amy, two for Marquia, and Sam, hungry. Uh, just cr just crawling just, my way back. Well, here we go. Here's our, here's our next one. Perhaps one of the strangest superheroes created is Combo Man. Student Rick Wilder has an accident involving an experimental device and a stack of Marvel comics, transforming him into Combo Man, a combination of 14 other heroes, including Cyclops' eyes, Hulk's forehead, and Human Torch's knees. He also gains all the strengths and weaknesses of all 14 heroes, but will revert to his normal form if not in possession of his comics. Yes, Marquia. <laughs> Um, I'm actually, it wasn't Human Torch's knees. That's an incredible guess. Uh, and in fact, was one of the things I wanted to talk about after this question, because of all the parts to choose from Human Torch, like the knees, that's where the money is. <laughs> um, but in fact, Combo Man did have Human Torch's knees. So specific. So and specific. So, wow. I will, say, I will say this character is a single a single issue, weird, uh, weird oh, okay. promotional character. This is not something you should know. This is just something I want to talk about because it's weird. <laughs> uh, Amy, do you have a guess? Um, actually, let's go with Combo Man isn't any of that. He's actually a failed attempt at merchandising tie-ins with the snack food. Amy, you're actually correct. <gasps> <laughs> no! Uh, it is, uh, it is not, in, uh, like, you haven't totally identified exactly what's wrong here, but you have identified part of the correction. And because it's such a wild, out of nowhere guess, I'm going to give you the point there. <laughs> um. Uh, Combo Man was, in fact, a tie-in uh, with Eagle Snacks to promote the Combo Snacks. Uh, right. So it was wow. a sing it was a single appearance character just for the uh, just for the sake of promoting combos. Um, now, what I said was true. This character was a combination of 14 different characters, like Hulk's forehead and stuff. Uh, the thing that was incorrect was I said that Rick Wilder would revert back to his normal form if he was not in possession of his comics. The correct thing is he would revert back to his normal form if he had not eaten combos in a recent uh, amount of time and needed the awesome power of combo snacks to to keep those 14 strong superhero powers with him at all times. I think it's like that feels like a not a ad for co like I if I read that I'd be like I'm never eating a cot that sounds awful. <laughs> I don't yeah. want human torches. I get human on. torches these. I don't want that. Keep it. It's um, like, because those are like regular knees, but on fire. <laughs> is the rest you of want fire on fruit? fire knees? Are you just burning the rest or, of your body? Yeah, or is it just normal, but you can choose for only your knees to catch up? If you're like, flame on, but only your knees kind of go up in flames. You know? <laughs> okay, so here's the full list. Here we go. Um, Hulk's forehead, Cyclops' eyes, Iron Man's jaw, Magneto's shoulders, Punisher's upper chest, Captain America's lower chest, Sabretooth's abs and biceps, Carnage's elbows, Daredevil's forearms, Spider-Man's hands, Century's thighs, Human Torch's knees, Silver Surfer's calves, and Gambit's feet. We got to pause on the chest bifurcation here <laughs> because there was a upper chest, a lower chest, but then abs. Now, I assumed they meant Captain America's abs when they said lower chest, but then there was subsequently somebody else's abs. So what, what, what's what? going on here? Is it just the nips? Is it just yeah. the nips? <laughs> oh, God. If it was just Captain America's nipples. <laughs> it was just like, hey, I mean, hey, never my, this, but just so you my, know. Those are America's nipples, my dude. <laughs> That's true. Wow. From, from out of nowhere, point for Amy. We'll go on to our next question. Squirrel Girl is a mutant with a variety of squirrel-related superpowers, including the ability to communicate with squirrel. Yes, yeah, so who's buzzing in? I got to open up my window. That is Amy buzzing in. Um, actually, 
at least at one point they retconned it that she is not a mutant. There is another weird fake yes. explanation for her powers. Correct. That is correct. You sound almost embarrassed to know that, or or or, <laughs> but that is that's the answer we're looking for. Uh, at least in the most recent installment, um, yeah. her her status has been retconned to be not a mutant, to something else related to her RNA or DNA, and she is quote medically and legally distinct from being a mutant. She can communicate with squirrels, but she also has all of the like relative power of a squirrel so if you've ever seen a squirrel like jump really high and like climb a tree like squirrels are actually very strong for their like body type so she is is also very strong and she is also getting her degree in computer science <laughs> yeah and then for powers of a girl she uh talked galactus out of uh eating uh, our planet so there you go Amy, once again, uh, well, you'll take that point. And we will move now to our last shiny question. And this is a game we're calling Find the Fake. Uh, so we're going to show you a couple of images here. Five of them will be real. One of them will be something that we just added in here that doesn't belong. Okay. Um, and specifically what we're looking for you to identify, uh, these are just a selection of perhaps lesser known Marvel characters. Five of them are real, one of them is not. The first person who can identify which one doesn't belong will get the point. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at those characters. <laughs> Sam immediately buzzing in, going for the strategy of just, I'm sure I can identify this. Go ahead. These are these are all extremely good. And <laughs> oh, there's like there's so much good here. But I got to go with the upper right this fellow with the springs. I was at first going to say Tits McCrystal Ball, but I just feel like that is probably something that actually did happen. <laughs> I feel like spring, spring feet. I'm going to say spring feet. Spring feet is the as the fake one. Uh, uh, yes. uh, that that does not belong Definitely. here. That was that was illustrated just for this uh, this particular uh, question. The characters that are here uh, in order, um, uh, left to right, top to bottom. Uh, the first there is is the Almighty Dollar, aka J. Pennington Pennypacker, who uh, was a CPA who was given the power to throw money at his problems uh, uh, by literally tossing, uh, launching pennies at people. Uh, I think that was just a one issue character. Next to him is the Phone Ranger, uh, a play oh. on the Lone Ranger, <laughs> um, aka A.G. Bell, who can uh, tap into communication devices. The bottom corner uh, there is Gamecock, uh, who is a Captain America villain. Uh, in the middle is Ruby Thursday, who is, I think, uh, does appear in other, uh, like, is like a more prevalent character than some of these other ones. Uh, and then the last one here is um, Armless Tiger Man. Uh, yeah. Armless. What? Tiger Man. Once again, does what it says on the box. Does what it says on the box. <laughs> Um, well, that point will go to Sam. We got six, two, one. Amy's pretty much wrapped this up. Uh, but we have one last question here. Our last question, as always, concerns real life skills. So nothing to do with Marvel Comics. This is just a making your way in the world kind of question. <laughs> Contrary to what comics may have you believe, radiation will not give you superpowers, and very well might kill you. People exposed to radiation should take potassium iodide, which prevents your body from taking in radioactive iodine. Adults are advised to take 130 milligrams every 24 hours. Yes, uh, Marquia. Did you say potassium? Oh, I'm actually. I'm actually. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the amount is off that you just said for the uh, amount you're supposed to take daily. That is the correct amount, or the yeah. recommended amount for me. Uh, okay. Sam? Um, actually, I think that, is potassium iodide incorrect? Uh, no, that is correct. That is. Okay. Uh, um, Amy, uh, do you have uh, a guess here? Uh, those were my guesses. So, um, actually, radiation will give you superpowers. Definitely go out and try it for yourself. Radiation will give you combos. Um, uh, no, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and call it because, again, I'm not really expecting anyone to know this answer. Uh, so, uh, potassium iodide is helpful for you. Uh, I said it, it keeps you from uh, keeps your body from taking in radioactive iodine. Um, in fact, it only keeps it from entering your thyroid gland. You're still going to get a lot of radiation in your right. body. It's it'll be like 
plugging up a leak on a massively sinking sinking ship where it's like it might help a little bit you should probably do it because it, it'll be really bad if your thyroid goes but uh but don't expect you to be invincible if you're just taking your iodine pills so our final score here six for amy two for Marquio, one for sam making amy our winner for this episode Yay! thank you uh it's just fun to talk comics with people uh, yeah, I mean that's the point of the show, like to to be to do a lot of like, did you know this is a thing? Um, uh, so uh, I hope uh, I hope you had a lot of fun coming on here. I certainly enjoyed having you on and talking shop and uh, and learning about comics myself from the people who read them more than I do. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Um,